vowing to fight on. I think what opponents of the policy have to, to say is, well, what is your alternative? What is your alternative to uh, people being shipped across the channel in very frail, unseaworthy dinghies, uh, risking their lives and undermining the rule of law? What's your alternative? We think it's a, a sensible partnership we set up with Rwanda. Yes, it may, it may take a while uh, to, to get working properly, but it doesn't mean we're not going to keep going. That's Boris Johnson speaking of the National Moral Arboretum and Staffordshire Estate. But yeah, just running here. Doors to manual means the aircraft doors are set back to manual mode upon landing. So that's what you say. I thought you had to lock the door. No, no. When you take off the cruiser set to automatic, sorry, the doors are set to automatic mode by the crew so that the uh, <laughs> automatic chutes would deploy. Um, I'm marking that exit over there. If you'd like to leave by that exit, which is the closest yeah, one to you, yeah, I'd be very grateful. Okay, so where does that leave the government? Where does it do possibly leave some kind of collision course between the European Court of Human Rights and the British government? We'll speak to a lawyer in just a moment. First up, the former leader of the Conservative Party and Cabinet Minister, Sir Ian Duncan Smith, who joins me now. What action should the government take over this, Sir Ian? Good morning to you. Uh, morning, Nick. Um, well, <clears throat> this uh, has uh, turned into a legal farce, really, because all our courts have agreed that the government may go ahead with this, including the Supreme Court, uh, to be overruled by a court that had no representations made to it, uh, and just intervened on the back of stuff that it had uh, read, as it were. So it's a ridiculous point. The government's got to deal with the convention anyway. If we have our own Bill of Rights, uh, then we shouldn't have to rely constantly back uh, to the court in Strasbourg because we should rely on our own court to be able to uphold human rights and the rule of law, which they were doing the other day. So the government should proceed, continue to go on with this because um, the, one of the big problems is that people are dying uh, in the channel uh, uh, in these rickety boats uh, abused by the traffickers pay huge sums of money and people die in the channel and not one single alternative has been raised. The one thing that people say is well, they should make the channel, the, the, you know, the, the route in easier. Well, that just means you end up with more asylum seekers coming out of the asylum who are actually coming for economic reasons. I don't have any problem, uh, as it were, with people trying to get into countries uh, for economic reasons, but that's not asylum seeking. They shouldn't be under the asylum seekers procedure, which is about those who are suffering serious uh, depredations and problems as a result of what happens to them personally in their own country. So the government's got to continue with this. A couple of points. You say deal with the European Court. Does that mean come out of the ECHR? Well, the key thing is to whether or not the ECHR, at the end of it all, should have the final right in Strasbourg to overrule a Supreme Court here in the UK. After all, in America, uh, the Supreme Court in the United States... In 300 yards, keep left to continue on Church Street. Appeal Court and the Supreme Court ruled that this was lawful for the government to go ahead. Uh, and if eventually the ECHR rules that this is lawful, then we will have gone ourselves into a mess for no reason. The truth is, this was always a voluntary affair for the ECHR, and uh, many countries sign up uh, to some but not all of the requirements in the ECHR that is allowed. So the government needs to look at this very carefully and decide what we're going to do about it. And lastly, you touched on this, Sir Ian. Of course, people would say these individuals have no other route. There is no other way. Keep to left to continue on Church Street. In the United Kingdom, there should be centres in Calais. There should be centres wherever. How would you respond to a more legalised or formalised fashion for these individuals to seek access to the United Kingdom? Continue for three quarters of a mile. But it is a swifter process. But let's just remember, uh, these individuals have crossed countries that are members of the ECHR that have human rights and the rule of law to get to the UK. It's not a case of them getting into a country where they will be treated fairly and freely. It's actually that they've crossed many countries for that reason because they've decided they can choose which country they want to come to. That's not the point of asylum. Asylum is when you leave a country where you are being abused to get to another country that will not abuse you. That has already happened by the time they get to Calais. The question really is, what do we do about those? <clears throat> there is a queue to get in, but what do we do about those who are abused by traffickers? I mean, I was one of the ones that brought the Modern Day Slavery Act in. It was us that made sure that those who generally suffer from slavery should have longer time to be able to set their case out. But this is not a case of that. This is a case of people who are in a country in France, on the border of France, who has human rights and does not abuse them.
In a quarter of a mile, at the roundabout, take the first exit onto the M4 slip road to London, Heathrow Airport. encouraged by the decision uh, yesterday, albeit very late on in the day. Those who say, if this system doesn't work, and I appreciate you're a lawyer and you can argue, well, it doesn't fall to me to sort it out, but do you have a way? Clearly you oppose the Rwanda scheme, so what is a better alternative in your view? In my view, the alternatives are twofold. Firstly, to focus and concentrate on trying to break, break these uh, swimming rings. Um, in a quarter of a mile, merge onto M4. ...suggested that they necessarily want to come to the UK. They're forced to uh, come to the UK and the least of the ringers get paid more and more money the further uh, uh, west uh, they, they bring uh, these little asylum seekers. So the real focus has to be on trying to break down these little walls, these uh, uh, rings, uh, yeah. and to, to, to stop you know, all the money that's uh, going that way. You uh, don't buy the idea that were Rwanda to be up and running, it would, quote, break the business model. You simply don't buy that, Mr. Miller. No, not at all. It's not a deterrent uh, at all. As long as money is being paid by for the asylum seekers to smugglers, they will really continue to come. Continue on M4 for five miles. supporters say this would stop that trade. They would argue you and colleagues in the legal profession are continuing to facilitate it, Mr. Luke. No, not at all. And it certainly wouldn't stop them. Uh, you know, we've had periods in the past years where uh, lawyers have been the main folks of individuals coming over the channel. Now we're in dinghy boats. Uh, if uh, they were stopped in the channel, soldiers would find another way. Lastly, if I can put it this way, three decisions went the way of the government in British courts. This was overturned, obviously, by the ECHR, by a judge or judges out of hours, merely going off documents, no submissions from your side or from the other side. How relaxed are you about that? Well, there were submissions in the sense that there were written submissions. Yes, but, but with no sort of a, a cross-questioning, for want of a better expression. No, no, representa sort of... no representation, active representation. No, absolutely. Um... Yeah. How, how comfortable are you with that? It, it does... To many of my listeners, I'm reading their emails, they, they think that's a little bit strange. Something as if this level of importance, why were you not allowed to represent yourself? Why was the government not allowed to represent itself? It was also worth saying that the Supreme Court didn't have any of submissions when they refused the permission as well. But in relation to the uh, question, the fact of the matter is that so because of the timing, how quickly this has been done by the government, there's been very little opportunity at all for individuals who were on that flight to get representation, let alone uh, bring their cases to court. And so this is a factor of how quickly the government wanted to push forward on the Rwanda scheme and start sending flights over there. Had they taken a more balanced approach, there'd been plenty of opportunity to get into court and hear full oral submissions uh, before any decision was taken to, to send the flight off the target. Lastly, so obviously, respecting your client's confidentiality, are there any details you can tell us about the five individuals you're acting for, or would you rather not go into any detail? I mean, I can give very generalised details that uh, all, all of them you know, are at risk and have been told they will be sent to Rwanda in circumstances where they've fled their country uh, fear and risk of persecution. And um, can you tell us which countries they were, or would you rather not? Uh, we have Iraq, Iran, Syria, Sudan and Eritrea. I'm grateful for your time, Stuart Luke, your Joint Head of Public Law and Community Care of Insta Law Solicitors. You're acting for five individuals. We'll come to your reactions on that. 7.16, the LBC News headlines now, Simon Conway. A last-minute legal ruling by European judges has stopped the first deportation flights to Rwanda. A second suspect has been arrested over the disappearance of a British journalist and a local expert in the Amazon rainforest. And there's a warning almost 200,000 coastal properties in England are at risk of being lost by the 2050s. LBC weather, fine, dry and warm for most to high of 28 degrees. LBC Travel, I'm Joanne Webb. Delays on the M4 eastbound between the M25 and Junction 4 at Heathrow, and that's following an accident. All the lanes are open now, but it's still very slow. Two lanes are closed on the M3 northbound up to Junction 3 at Nightwater. It's because of emergency repair works, and as a result, there are queues on the approach. In Shoreditch, Great East.
Euston Street has just been closed northbound at Curtin Road and that's following an accident. Very busy on the South Circular Road both ways to queue because of the ongoing works. On the underground there's no service on the Bakerloo line between Elephant and Castle and Lambeth North for the emergency works and minor delays on London Overground services between Sydenham and West Croydon. This is LBC. Got the tickets, Sergey? Yep. Now, what movie are we watch? Ooh, an adventure. <laughs> ah, where are we? Look at the cobwebs. Oh, I don't know. It's scary. Okay, stay close to me, and whatever you do, don't wake the dragon. Uh -oh. Nice try, then. Oh, Sergey, run! Make a new Tuesdays and Wednesdays with two for one cinema tickets when you switch to prepare the market. With a qualifying product, one membership a year, participating cinemas, Tuesday or Wednesday, two standard tickets only, cheap as free, T's and C's apply. Call Nick Ferrari now, 0345 6060 973. In two miles, at junction 4B, exit towards M3, M23. Drivers in a first of its kind UK settlement. At My Diesel Claim, we're handling claims against numerous vehicle manufacturers and represent over 600,000 drivers who have already started their claim. If you owned or leased a diesel vehicle between 2009 and 2020, you could be eligible for significant compensation. It's easy to sign up. Simply head to mydieselclaim.com and start your claim today. Ever dreamt of running your own business? It may be easier to achieve than you think. With a franchise, you start with a proven business model and the support of an established brand. Visit the British and International Franchise Exhibition on the 17th and 18th of June at Olympia, London. Meet a wide range of franchise brands, benefit from expert advice, and take the next step towards being your own boss. Get your free tickets today at franchisetickets.co.uk. Got a parcel to send? Do it the easy way with Royal Mail. Go online, buy your postage, save yourself some cash, and arrange for your postie to collect it. Don't worry if you can't print your label. Your helpful postie can bring that for you. They'd love to stay in chat too, but, you know, parcels don't collect themselves. Click, save, we collect. Visit send.royalmail.com. Save us based on online parcel prices compared to over-the-counter prices. Exclusions apply. Nick Ferrari at breakfast. Call 0345 6060 Twenty minutes after seven. Andrew coming to you, you'll be the first caller. Let me take you through the front pages of the newspapers. I think we're probably going to get most, not all I know, but quite a number of them are going with this story. Very powerful one for the Daily Mail. They have a picture, a truly terrifying picture, of one of those giant oil tankers in the channel. White Cliffs of Dover by this is a very good shot out of the Just a few minutes of time, and yes, he does. So well done to, well done to you, um, Steve Wynn. Uh, so that's uh, so the White Cliffs of Dover with this giant oil tank, and then there's a tiny rubber dinghy with, well, I would say eight, ten, I have to say all males, uh, right in the path of this oil tanker. Uh, where is the humanity in this and these people? That is uh, arrowed in a box there. Eurocorp grounds Jetter or wonder. So that is one of the powerful, powerful ones. What a cruel farce, so pines the Daily Mirror. European judges block deportations to Rwanda as the front page of the Times. Their picture is a loot jubilant Johnny Bairstow's with his match-winning 77-ball century. That means you hit 100 runs in 77 balls or deliver is the second fastest ever in English history. Quite incredible. Uh, Mr. Bairstow also finds himself on the front page of Metro, as does the England captain, who also had a tremendous knock as well. And uh, Ben Stokes, but their leaders were Wonder Air, Fa Air Fast. It's also the lead of the LBC website. We won't be deterred. Government vows to deliver a Wonder plan. Uh, there we are. There's Mr. Verso on the front page of The Guardian as well. Chaos as first Rwanda flight cancelled by court ruling. <laughs> there he is. Brilliant Bairstow on the front page of the eye as well. Hundreds cross channel despite Rwanda threat. Gosh, serious on the Times as well. Uh, sorry, the Daily Telegraph, the Daily Telegraph. European judges halt migrant flight to Rwanda. Um, Daily Express is fury as Rwanda flight is blocked. And the one that's not gone with it in is the Sun. They go with a, a sports story. No, not Mr. Berso and not the England flops either. The uh, England team who were goulashed by Hungary. Rather Tyson Fury vowing to box again. Show me the money, he said. I wonder if he actually said that. Show me the money, he declared last night. And he's training again ahead of a £200 million pound return. Is that the purse or is that his share? 200. That's what those golfers are getting up in Hertfordshire, isn't it? They're getting like £150 million or something. Great work.
Perth if you can get it. Okay, and up with me, Andrew in Halifax. What should the government do? Accept defeat or press on? Good morning. Uh, good morning, Nick. Uh, I'm actually incandescent with the decision that was made last night. Uh, the government should definitely press on, and I would even suggest uh, that the government makes uh, a sort of a, a buy one, get one free offer, you know, like the supermarkets do. How's that? Uh, for, well, for every illegal immigrant that we deport, we could also deport a liberal lefty that goes out and shills for them at every opportunity, because quite frankly, this country will be better off without both sets of people. What you're actually saying is, this country will be better off without laws and a court to which it has signed up. Now, you might have cut down or concerns about the ECHR, but Brin did actually help establish it. Well, what, what I'm saying is that this country would be better off without people that would walk a thousand miles to bring anyone into the country, irrespective of legality, but wouldn't walk ten yards to drop a five-pound note into the hat of a homeless veteran that has gone out and fought for this country. These people are absolutely disgusting, and they are making this country ungovernable. Because they follow the law. <laughs> because uh, liberal, liberalism and leftism have permeated every religious and civic body in this country, which is precisely what Blair intended when he wanted to eradicate the forces of conservatism. Andrew, thank you for your strong views. Very, very cogently put. Let's see if others agree, though. Ivan's in, Ivan is in St Albans. Ivan, your view. Good morning. Good morning to you, Nicholas. And what a sham. I blame the French. And I'll tell you why. Because every time we, we do something in this country, uh, uh, no one likes us. But they, they want to live here. And the amount of money that's paid to France for the security to stop these people from coming over, they should be blamed. They're about five, six times larger than what we are. Uh, and I feel that they have more room than, than Britain. And I feel that uh, we do our best. And uh, I think all these people keep c coming over here. It's not just there for the British taxpayer. I think it's, I think it's ironic. Should, they, but should Mr Johnson carry on the fight then? I, I agree with him 100%. Yeah, I, not Will and I don't believe in that. No, that, that's passing the buck. But I believe that France should get their act together and help help Britain not to bring more of these people over. They don't like us anyway. Okay, uh, um, I don't know if they, they don't like us. I think possibly the landmass of France, you might have slightly overestimated it. And many point to the number of thousands of people, of course. Uh, migrants of France does take each year, but I understand your anger, Ivan. Thank you. It's interesting, isn't it? It's bubbling out there. There's anger about this rule under the decision. It's probably playing possibly into Mr. Johnson's political political hands anyway. Uh, we'll take more calls on that in a moment. 7.25. So <laughs> problems are in the way, and, uh, and problems north of the border as well. Scotland's first minister, Nicola Sturge, announcing plans for a new independence referendum campaign at her official residence in Edinburgh. After everything that has happened, Brexit, Covid, Boris Johnson, it is time to set out a different and better vision. It is time to talk about making Scotland wealthier and fairer. It is time to talk about independence. Well, let's turn to Ramsey Jones, who served as special advisor to David Cameron on Scotland, former director of media for the Scottish Conservatives, now political strategist, uh, joining me now. What would be the legality or other further first to press on with this? Good morning, Mr. Jones. Good morning to you, Nick. Uh, well, the legality would be is pretty well accepted that to do it, if you like, uh, above reproach has happened last time in 2014. Uh, Westminster, the UK Parliament, the UK government needs to grant what's called a Section 30 order, getting very technical here, Nick. Mm -hmm. But that means that both governments agree on the parameters and the right for the Scottish Parliament to conduct a referendum. It is inconceivable that that's going to be forthcoming within the 18 months that Nicola Sturgeon wants to hold one, and she's now dangling this prospect that in the next couple of weeks she's going to pop up in the Scottish Parliament and say, this is how we can hold one anyway. And I was just reflecting that you had that chat about Rwanda and the flights on there just now, and there's a massive parallel happening both sides of the border. In both cases, a government with a policy that sort of splits the country down the middle, either trying to be the victor by getting their way or the victim of the courts if they don't get their way and having someone to play. In 300 yards, a junction 4B, exit towards M3, M23. Because Nicola Sturgeon is Nicola Sturgeon and she's Exit at junction 4B, then keep right at the fork. Bro. 
right at the fork. Continue on M25 south for one and a half miles. of a mile at junction 14 use the left two lanes to take the a3113 exit to heathrow airport use the left two lanes to exit at junction 14 then keep right Right. Continue for half a mile. of a mile at the roundabout take the first exit onto airport way a3113 Take the second exit onto Southern Perimeter Road.
exit the roundabout onto Southern Perimeter Road. Pick up amazing quality, great value food and drink from your nearest BP store. You have arrived at BP. We're proud. In 300 yards at Western Perimeter Road roundabout, take the second exit and stay on Southern Perimeter Road. Ooh.